Great. Um, well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome. Um, hope you're all keeping safe and well and have had a great start to the year so far. Uh, my name's Will Sibley, and um, I'm thrilled to be introducing and steering uh, the leaf surgery this morning. This is our first leaf surgery of the year, uh, and we're kicking off 2023 with focusing on a continuously important area of engagement between the farm industry, the public and young people, and we're shining a light on Leaf Education and Leaf Open Farm Sunday. Um, there are no better two people to do this than our very own Director of Education and Public Engagement, Carl Edwards, and Leaf Open Farm Sunday Manager, Annabelle Shackleton. A very warm welcome to both of you. Um, thanks for coming. And we'll be hearing from Carl and Annabelle in a moment. Um, but just to let those who haven't attended Leaf Surgery before, we deliver regular online webinars to keep in touch with our members and these alternate in focus on different themes that are relevant to food and farming. Um, and we really enjoy hearing from guest speakers on these different themes, as well as um, we enjoy interacting with our audience too. Um, and we covered lots of quite interesting themes in the second half of last year in surgeries, from IPM to insect and vertical farming. Um, and as well as this one today, we've got lots of different topics lined up for the rest of the year, which we're looking forward to. Um, and we'd love to hear from our audience, so please do submit your questions to Carl and Annabelle via the chat function as we go along. That should be somewhere in the bottom right. Um, and we've saved some time at the end for a QA. and a um, And then finally, before we um, hear from Carl and Annabelle, just a quick update for everyone that our Leaf Annual Conference is back um, and being held at Stonely Abbey, Kenilworth in Warwickshire on Friday the 3rd of February, which is three weeks today. Um, and after a couple of years of quite a lot of change, um, the conference will focus on tradition, transformation and tactics and, and reshaping and kind of rethinking um, what's the next chapter for global farming and where does LEAF sit. So please do come along if you're available. It should be really interesting. Um, it's free to attend and spaces will be limited. So please do have a look on our events page on the LEAF website to find out how to come along. Um, OK, we'll, we'll get stuck in. Um, and I'll start by asking a, a question to both uh, both of you, Carl and Annabelle. Um, and that Leaf Education has been a really great success um, and your work to engage and motivate young people um, and the general public to get involved with the industry through different experiences and different learning. Um, and then of course, attracting and encouraging them to be out on farm in a number of different ways. And then on the flip side uh, with farmers and what they can do as educators um, and what they can gain in kind of helping to generate that deeper and wider understanding of, of what they do. Um, so the question is, why is this important? What, what are the important reasons you can share of why farmers should get involved in the initiative? Um, and on the flip side, what, why is it important for the public to engage too? So may, maybe Carl, you, you could go first in answering that one. Thank you, Will. Um, so yes, of of course, for us, it is all about that engagement and that education of, of both the public and specifically young people through leaf education. So why is it important? First of all, for our industry, it's important because we get to tell our story. We get to fight any misconceptions that maybe are out there, any mistruths that we see. And it's a chance for us to engage with, inform, educate our future consumers, our future leaders, our future decision makers. So almost throwing it back, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we want to engage with them? Now, for us in the education team, we're all qualified teachers. We've got a big passion for working with young people. And what we see as well through the agri-food industry is this fantastic medium and vehicle for delivering national curriculum, exam specifications through this very unique uh, and very interesting way where we're touching every sense with young people. And, and then it's paying it forward for, for both young people and for our industry in that actually we're opening young people's eyes to potential career opportunities and highlighting routes into our industry. And, and we see that regularly. And I know we're going to talk a little bit more about our impact later on. So really, it's about opening young people's eyes. It's about opening the public's eyes. But also, why is it important? 
because it's generally genuinely the right thing to do and a good thing to do everyone that does this gets something from it gets something positive from it um whether that is informing those young people whether that's just providing a fantastic day if we're out on farm for example for us it's about those long-term impacts and paying it forward but actually very much there and then in the moment there's just that genuine good feeling of engaging with a different group of people uh, and, and getting them to understand what we're passionate about yeah that's some great reasons and i guess first and foremost interaction is the key um mm. to get that and um, whether it be around the table in the classroom or out in the field um, great, thank you. And, and Annabelle, what, what would you say, um, give those important reasons of, of why, why the initiative? Uh, I totally agree with what Carl has just said. And of course, the audience for Open Farm Sunday is actually wider than that. So predominantly it's families. So it's, you know, it's from babies right through to grandparents. So it's that, and they are so keen to learn. I think since Open Farm Sunday started in 2006, there's been a real shift an interest and and yes it, it's a fairly light touch but there is a genuine interest from the public to learn more about how their food is produced the people behind it and they really want to to find out about it so it's our job to actually make sure that we get those messages across we do engage them um, so that people value the food that they eat so they value the work that farmers do and from simple things like when they go into a supermarket and they're buying a loaf of bread they actually understand the story behind you know these grains and how long it takes it takes seconds to buy a loaf of bread when you go into a supermarket and people do not understand uh, and value the, 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 of what has gone into producing it. And that is so important. We need to reduce food waste. We need people to respect uh, the food that they're eating. We need people to buy more sustainably produced food. And so we need to share that story behind the food. And I, I have to, of course, got some uh, leaf mark oil here as one of my props as well, and some, uh, and, and some rapeseed. But, but yeah, it's just hugely important to actually share that story. And, and I've actually got statistics as to why farmers themselves, because open for all of leaf education and our engaging society work, we, we're always surveying, researching and getting feedback. And from a farmer's perspective, you know, they're doing it 97% to in, inform the public about food and farming, 87% to build community relations, 77% to promote all that farmers do to manage the environment and to inspire a new generation of farmers. So, you know, lots of fantastic reasons for getting involved. Thank you, Annabelle. Yeah, you, you've touched on food waste and and the story of pro of production from from the field to the shop and yeah it is quite a complex um journey and the whole food system itself is is very complex so um getting the engagement and understanding of how that works is going to help to um i i guess maybe get rid of any perceptions that might not be right so it improves the whole um the whole story as itself um great so it, it's a good Good few years you two have been working in the area um, and lot, lots of experience over time. Um, I guess in the broader sense, there's you know been a health pandemic. There's more um, urgency with climate change and you've touched on it just there, Annabelle, that there's a much greater interest in food and where it comes from and how it's produced. Um, so we, I'd like to touch on next on kind of the positive impacts over those years of, of improving that understanding through whether it be experience um, or, or reading or writing or speaking, or whatever. Um, may, maybe, Carl, you can, your best answer to this one as you oversee leaf education. Yeah, thank you, Will. Um, so just to follow on specifically from that point then, what we've seen since the pandemic is a huge increase in interest from young people, from schools, from the wider public, um, I think Annabelle and I were talking the other day to um, a couple of people and we were saying, well, actually, for Open Farm Sunday last year, whilst we had fewer farmers open up, we had this huge number, still over 175,000 members of the public still went out onto farm. Now, when we opened registration, actually, what we saw was we were in the middle of lockdown still. 
So fewer farmers therefore did register. So just imagine what we're gonna see in the coming years with this huge increase. For leaf education, we had this fivefold increase of young people that we worked with last year, post pandemic. Um, this year, we've worked with over 36,000 children directly through bespoke engagement. So that's on farm or in classroom, plus 30,000 children through farmer time, plus over 300,000 children during farming fortnight. So everything is just building more and more and more. But as Annabelle said, everything that we do is measured, it's evaluated, we look at the impact that we have. And we're seeing very real impacts. And for some of our audience, you'll have heard me talk about our national competition before. Our national competition is for 14 to 16 year olds. Um, and we take them to a land-based college for three days. We give them a hypothesis that young people argue for or against. And it's all about immersing these young people that have got very little, if no connection to the agri-food industry before. Um, we, we, we know it's resource heavy. We take seven schools with three children and two teachers over the course of that weekend. Hypothesis have been um, uh, drones will be our farmers of the future or um, uh, the farmers are guardians of our environment, uh, looking at carbon neutral uh, aims and targets as well. And actually from our national competition last year, two thirds of those that attended went on to land-based college and university. They didn't even know it existed before they worked with us. So everything we do is about that meaningful impact. No, it doesn't mean 30,000 children tomorrow are suddenly gonna enter our industry and have a career, but it does mean that those young people that we work with, and this is a bit of a bugbear of mine at the moment, all of those young people that we worked with were hugely positive about our industry, about our sector. Not one negative comment. Yes, they will ask questions. Yes, they will want more information, but not one had any negative impression or understanding of our industry. And so that's really important for us to, to make sure that they've got the information at their fingertips, but also they can ask the questions in an open way. We're educators, we engage with the public, we want them to ask these questions, we want to be able to respond to these. Um, so true impacts then, those two thirds of young people that have entered um, the land-based college and universities in the last year, previous to that every year we've seen at least a third of them enter. Um, also then, what we've seen this year is um, we're doing a, a big piece of teenage research work, our, our second, working with the School of Sustainable Food and Farming, specifically Harper and McDonald's. I'll talk about this later on anyway. Um, but one of the questions we asked young people is, is what can the agri-food industry to help tackle the climate crisis? Or what do they think we're already doing to tackle the climate crisis? And actually really positive responses. But one of them um, was focused around carbon and the issue around carbon. And so if you look at the stats, it was very much, yep, yeah, the industry needs to do more to fight uh, this hugely important greenhouse gas emission, and we need to do more. Now, if you look at some of the press and media, it would show that the, uh, the public and young people just don't have a clue about this, and they think we're polluting and we're the biggest cause of greenhouse gas emissions. What we did from our teenage research that went out to over two, almost two and a half thousand young people is we then took 80 onto farm over at Elverdom, Leaf Demonstration Farm, they also supply McDonald's. And we spoke to those young people about carbon. And we said, well, you've, you've said that us as an industry, as a sector, we really need to do something about this. Why do you think that? And what does that mean for you? And it became really apparent to us very quickly, mainly from the comments that they gave, that, oh, well, there's this climate crisis, carbon is a bad thing, so therefore, if you were any industry, we would have said carbon is an issue and you need to work on carbon. So we spoke to young people and, and they've got this conception that uh, just by planting trees, we're going to solve all issues of climate crisis around carbon. Um, um, and so we spoke to them about the role of soil, the importance of soil, uh, what work the agricultural industry are doing around protecting our soil. And within just one hour, we were looking at carbon sequestration, we were looking at the carbon cycle, and suddenly these young people really understand and understood what it is we are doing as an industry. They were looking at soil compaction, they were looking at cover cropping, they really understood just from that hour session with us, from a, from a, a knowledge base of practically zero, 
and some of these students were environmental A-level students. So you would expect them to have that slightly more um, and a bigger understanding of the carbon cycle. So we really are seeing these changes, but actually what we see as well from the work that we deliver is we not only see this huge shift in understanding, this huge shift in respect for our industry, a shift in interest in our industry, but actually we're supporting those individual children, both academically, we're teaching things in a completely different way, I can see a couple of our RECs, our regional education consultants are on the call, and I know we deliver business studies A-level and GCSE out on farm. You know, that's something that we weren't doing before. And suddenly we've got this great interest um, and, and seeing agriculture through a subject that they're used to is really important as well. Um, so for us, that's important, but also we're supporting those young people around their own mental health and well-being around the benefits of, of getting out into the wider natural environment. And actually when they go home, they're having those conversations with families and they've, they've had that chance to formally engage in a safe and secure way through a, a school visit, for example, through an arranged visit that we would deliver and through Open Farm Sunday, they are formal engagements. Yes, they're open to the public to attend should they choose, but actually they're structured. They're on this day, they're at this time, you can attend. And that gives huge confidence to the public and to young people to engage. And those children, when they've been with us, then will go home and talk to their families about what they're doing, uh, about what they've seen. Um, over the course of the last five years um, and five years ago, we highlighted um, that what's really important for us is to engage with teenagers and, and a lot of young, uh, lot of our industry weren't really engaging with that group they were seen as maybe difficult or challenging or less engaged just simply not true I was a, he a deputy head teacher for a long time of uh, a secondary school for me it's about that lifelong learning you work with primary age children but you continue to work just because you've delivered a session to uh, a group of year two students about farming doesn't mean they're going to suddenly enter the industry when it comes to 18 or have this passion for it. You need multiple touch points throughout the throughout their education. And so last year we saw a sevenfold increase in the work done with key stage four and five students. So those aged 15 to 18 and supporting them. And actually we've seen across the industry a complete shift in the way that agricultural societies, for example, and different organizations now engage. And they recognize the need to engage with all age groups. Um, also, we know the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, after our previous research, shifted their strategy to engage in different ways and listen to what we delivered through our work with young people um, as to how they now engage across the whole of Europe. So our impacts are far and wide. They are for the individual. We're seeing for the, the agricultural industry, the support that we offer, this huge, great tidal wave of confidence and interest to engage now more than ever before. An example of that for us is our CVAS accredited training, where we support through professional training, um, how to deliver safe, high quality and fun farm visits through all different age groups, through the public, etc. cetera. Um, this year, we're going to be running at least 20 of those courses. Pre-pandemic, we were delivering about four or five a year. You know, there's that huge, huge engagement and it just everything feels right. It feels like the time is right. Young people are more keen than ever before to engage. They want to learn more. The public have this genuine interest more now than ever before. And our industry want to engage. So everything is coming together in that really positive way. So plenty to look ahead for for 2023. And I know we'll talk about that in a minute, Will. Yeah, we will. Thank you very much. That was a really extensive and comprehensive answer to the impacts. And I guess there's a huge amount of um, kind of social science and in cases, psychological science behind all of it. And in terms of the analysis you can have with measuring that impact and you touched on early development and how important it is to for young people, especially to process information and, and learn. And there's such a contrast between um, I guess what's in reality and what what maybe is processed maybe online um, or, or just through your own inner thought um, at such an early, 
early young age. So, um, yeah, really important. Thank you. Um, okay, we'll move over to Annabelle um, and we move on to Leaf Open Farm Sunday 2. Um, and you mentioned since 2006 was the, was the first one. Um, and you've seen thousands of, of farms open their gates over the years in June. Um, so how has that engagement changed and become better, both in terms of its outreach and I, I guess in the more practical ways um, of, of how farmers have opened their gates and what impact has that brought to? It, it really is quite phenomenal how it's changed, you know, and do you know what? We actually have about six or seven farmers who've actually opened up every single year since 2006. So to them, thank you so much. And to all our farmers who take part. But yeah, we do do research. I mean, also I've been looking at the, the information in the chat as well. Some of the impact stats in our impact report on our website this year are just brilliant. 72% of visitors this year said that they feel that the farming industry is doing something to help combat climate change. That's a perception that they've come away with from having visited a Leaf Open Farm Sunday event. That is hugely powerful that they're actually recognising that and taking that message away. And, for, and everyone's talking about careers. 49% of visitors who, who went to Open Farm Sunday events said that um, Open Farm Sunday had inspired someone in their group to consider a career in the agri-food sector. Again, that's a hugely powerful uh, stat. And from what Carl was saying, yes, it, it, uh, influencing, informing and getting young people on side is important. But of course, parents are key decision makers when young people are, 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 are deciding which to, or key influences when young people are making decisions um, as to which industry to go into. So it is hugely important for them to um, but to have parents on board so that when their young child says, I want to go into farming or I think I want to work in the food industry. And the, 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 hopefully they'll think back to that positive experience that they had on farm, seeing the professionalism of, uh, of the whole agricultural uh, sector. And they'll say, yeah, we'll support you in doing that. Which is but the way things have changed, it, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, since 2006, Social media, online uh, facilities have just come on board. When I first started managing Open Farm Sunday, one of the biggest points that, that farmers said that was holding them back from hosting an event was actually the unknown of not knowing how many people were going to go out and visit a farm. And in actual fact, 55% of the farmers who opened last year uh, um, actually used an online ticketing service. If, if the event's free, they're free of charge to use. They take a little bit of time, but it just helps you to manage manage uh, the, the number of people who are coming uh, coming to an event. And yeah, communication has changed. The beauty of Leaf Open Farm Sunday is actually, you know, there is now agri-tourism is increasing. There are lots of lambing events. There are lots of other open days, farm attractions, and all of us are getting across that farming story. But by coming together on farming's annual open day, on that one day a year, we're just together showcasing British farming, hitting social media, hitting the press and media, and actually shouting loud and clear and actually getting our positive messages out to the public. So it is so important. I really encourage more farmers to get involved. It, it really is fantastic. And yet yeah, that lasting positive impact, we actually do a survey with visitors straight after Open Farm Sunday. And then we do it a couple of, um, uh, th a couple, three months on to actually say, uh, you know, what is that three month on impact? Are you still talking about Leaf Open Farm Sunday and farming? And that's what, we have some lovely quotes from farmers and, and from visitors and just saying that by visiting a farm on Open Farm Sunday, it's opened conversations. They're actually talking about where their food comes from. They're actually, when they're out in the countryside, they remember little aspects of that farm visit. They feel connected. So 96% of visitors said that they feel more connected with farmers and that they now appreciate more the work that farmers do. 
they're more 91% uh, more aware and interested in farming issues in the news and media because they just feel that connection with our industry. And 98% of, of visitors have a better understanding of what sustainably produced food means. And, and for us as LEAF, that, that, that is all that we can ask for. So yeah, huge impact and yeah, it's changed. Farmers are grouping together. Last year we had 251 farms take part. Um, we know that uh, yeah, farmers are teaming up and hosting events, but, but the beauty is, is that it's completely flexible and we have, um, there's opportunity for farmers to host a small farm walk for 30, 40, 50 people, right through to our larger events. We actually had three events this year that had more than 5,000 visitors, but that's because the farmer hosting has actually wanted to have that number of people. So, so yeah, hugely, huge changes. And also in the support that we're giving farmers as well. And, that, you know, with the likes of Zoom, you know, we're communicating with people across Britain here and, and wider and, and globally. And that, that, that's great. So we can provide support to farmers hosting and use all the communications to, to provide support to the farmers and to actually promote Open Farm Sunday to, to the public. So, yeah, it's, it's hugely, hugely positive. That's great, Annabelle. Thank you. It's so positive and such a good idea. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad it's it's been successful. Um, and any farmers in the audience who, who haven't done it yet and are thinking about it, yeah, we can provide support and great hands um, in, in Annabelle and, and the team to provide that. Um, and then, of course, the careers as well and, and getting people engaged and um, Food is universal and, and farming it always will be. So we, why not, as Carl, Carl said at the start, why not get engaged and get involved? Um, brilliant. Um, and on that, so to both of you, looking forward to this year and, and beyond, what, what have you got planned? Um, we'll, we'll go on Annabelle first, as, as you know, <laughs> Leave Open Farm yeah. Sunday will we'll come around the corner um, and, and there's always a theme. Um, so we're, we're all interested to hear what, what have you got planned, Annabelle? Well, do you know what? The, the main thing that we're actually saying as far as the theme's concerned this year is that we actually um, uh, re-asked visitors in our surveys last year, what is it that you want to hear about on Open Farm Sunday uh, for your next visit in 2023? And of course, we haven't mentioned the date yet. It's the 11th of June this year. And do you know what? The top five topics of interest that people wanted to hear about, and the top one is just the stories about the farm. They love hearing those rich stories so they feel connected. So any farmers out there worried about what they're going to say to the public, what they're going to you know, do, do they have to organise a big event? The, the public simply want to meet a farmer and hear those farming stories and those everyday activities that farmers do are a whole new world uh, to the public. But they also want to hear about animal welfare. They want to see the high standards that, um, that, that, that farmers are actually uh, working to. And they want to find out about wildlife and bi biodiversity and how farmers are farming to enhance the environment. And of course, all visitors love machinery and hearing about the technology as, uh, as well. So those are the top topics that people want to find out about this year. And, and you know what, we're just saying to people, Share the story that you're comfortable with sharing and just try and steer your stories in the direction of those topics. So, so that's really what we're doing. But we've got, hopefully COVID is gone now <laughs> or we're, we're actually living with it. We're living in a world with it. So we're actually back to face to face. I'm going out to meetings. Um, I'm heading actually up to the NFU Scotland conference. They've invited me up there to have a stand to talk about Open Farm Sunday. I'm out and about. We've got lots of support lined up for farmers. We've got breakfast meetings actually taking place face to face. Ten events across the country from the 16th of February to the 4th of April. All the details are on our website, farmsunday.org. And then we've got some Zoom meetings as well in March, April and May. And the main thing to say is that it's myself, Tabitha Salisbury, who many of you will know through Farmer Time, absolutely 
packed full of ideas and inspiration in there to support you as well. But we also have a team of ambassadors, Leaf Open Farm Sunday ambassadors across the country, and they are at the end of the telephone at any time to talk through ideas, if you've got any concerns, or you just need some idea of, of where you're moving forward. We've got that team of ambassadors. And on the website, um, there's a link right on the homepage. We've got an information pack for farmers. So if people prefer to actually get more information, there's case studies in there, but there's this little information pack that you can take a look at as well. So there's lots of information out there. Face-to-face -face meetings, which we're all really excited about because there's just nothing like actually talking face-to-face -face to farmers. So yeah, lots of support. Very exciting. Thank you, Annabelle. Um, 11th of June, everyone. Um, note it down. And and Carl, uh, what, what have you got planned ahead? Thank you, Will. So we've got a really, really exciting year ahead of us. Um, so launching next week, working with BASF, biggest job on earth, we've got Why Farming Matters. So some of you might already be aware of Why Farming Matters. It's been downloaded tens of thousands of times. I think I think it's the most popular resource that we've got. And we've just re-updated it all. Um, for a primary school audience. We've got this big launch um, next week for it. So it's all free to download or to have a, a, a physical copy. There are gonna be farmer training sessions so that we can support you in going out and delivering that uh, with school groups or with the public. We've got teacher CPDs coming up so we can support them in using it in the primary curriculum. Um, so that's our big launch next week. Um, we've also been, really pleased and proud of the long-term relationship we've had with Sainsbury's and we're working on the Helping Everyone Eat Better campaign. Um, again, we're looking from early years foundation stage, so our four-year-olds all the way up to key stage five, so our 18-year-olds, and we're supporting Sainsbury's store colleagues, we're supporting uh, schools in, in how to have that engagement, potentially through supermarkets and, and through the stores themselves, but also in the classroom as well. Um, of course, we worked with them in the last 12 months as part of COP26 and um, Sainsbury's Global Farm, where we highlighted our leaf mark producers and we highlighted the positive impact that we as an industry have had and can have on climate. And that from a leaf perspective, for 30 years, we've been aware of this and we've had this uh, this positive, uh, climate positive, nature positive, society positive uh, engagement. Um, the the other thing then that we uh, will have is our national competition will be back this year, um, potentially uh, a little earlier in the year at the end of the summer term. But going back to our teenage research, then this is hugely important. We are doing this on behalf of industry. We did this five years ago on behalf of industry, where we surveyed over a thousand young people. And we had great support from our honorary president, the Countess of Wessex, um, and worked with the Rothamsted Research at that point. Everything that we put forward as recommendations to industry, we have seen either industry deliver or we have delivered ourselves. So young people said they wanted a national competition. We delivered. They wanted Farming Fortnight. We've seen almost a million, uh, actually over a million young people engage with Farming Fortnight. They want to see more careers work. They want to see more work with 15, 16, 17 year olds. All of this has been delivered. So this piece of research, it's twice as big. We're really proud to be working with Harper and McDonald's through the School of Sustainable Food and Farming to deliver this. Almost two and a half thousand young people were surveyed. It's hugely, hugely positive for our industry. 75% of young people think that agri-food should play a larger part within the school and within the context of school and their learning. Um, the key way that young people see them as learning is through experiential learning. So through those farm visits, through those talking to industry professionals across the agri-food industry. They don't want some celebrity talking at them on a TV programme. They want to learn. They would much rather see young people with their own experience, their lived experience, and young people from industry that they can engage with. They believe that, well, three quarters again believe that what our industry does is sustainable. That Almost 90% believe that our industry considers the environment in everything that we do. Um, over two thirds of young people believe that 
they should be very much more interested with 100% saying they should be at least a little bit more interested in where their food comes from. Um, young people are telling us that they want to know more around the environmental impact of their products and they want to look at food assurance more. Leafmark, for example. Um, so we talk a lot around food assurance and actually what they're looking at and what they're most interested in is the environmental sustainability of food. And we're moving away from food miles and this carbon uh, piece, actually. They want to look at it in the round. So we're encouraging or will be encouraging uh, industry to, to look at how they can engage and work with us to engage with that young uh, generation. Um, it's been really interesting as well in that the majority of young people have never had any information around careers in our sector, but want that information. When we ask them, how would you most uh, like that information delivered? Talking to industry professionals, work experience, hugely, hugely important. They want work experience. And we want to look at how we can look at frameworks to deliver that across industry and working with the Institute of Agriculture and Horticulture on that. Um, teachers and advisors as well, really important. Again, hugely, hugely positive opinions of our industry from young people. They claim that it is a rewarding industry. We are a resilient industry. Uh, when we looked at pay, long gone is this misconception of manual labour, low paid um, jobs. Actually, more young people came back that it was technical and it was highly skilled and, and well paid, which is lovely to hear. Um, so everything that we're doing over the course of these next few months, because this, this research is taking 12 months. Our next step is in April, we will be um, at a residential event with almost 100 young people um, to really find out. So what does that mean for us as an industry? What are our next steps? What are the call to actions? What do we need to see industry come together at and deliver? And we will be announcing those in April and May, and we'll be looking at setting up working groups for industry partners to come together and deliver. Um, what is really interesting is that this generation of young people coming up are no more a conscious consumer and are no more uh, a sustainable consumer, if you like, but they are more keen to learn how they can be. So at the moment, they are no different to any other generation. So I know in the press and media, they'll have you all believe that young people only buy products if it is sustainable. But actually, price is the most important factor, followed by taste and the look of a product. Uh, and you can see that across all insights, consumer insights. But the environment is the third most important, and they want to learn more about that. What's interesting, though, is they're generally passive consumers. They believe that our supermarkets and our big brands and restaurants are doing the right thing. So we need to prove that they are doing the right thing because they have that trust in that area and they believe that sustainable food decisions are being made by brands and by supermarkets before the products come forward to them. As they put to us, why would we ever have the choice of a sustainably sourced product? Because does that mean that we've got a choice of a non-sustainably sourced product then? And their argument is why are they even on the shelves? So there's this huge concept um, to look at around that. So yeah, that's all the exciting piece for us, Will, coming forward. And we can't wait to share more of that. Um, I could talk at length about all of the research, but I won't, I'll stop there. So much food for thought. Um, thank you, Carl. Um, lots to look forward to. We'll, we'll, we'll try and um, answer some questions. We've got, got a bit of time now. I'll, I'll pass on to Claire um, to, to steer those. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Um, and thanks, Carl and Annabelle. You are both incredibly inspiring. I'm sure the audience will agree. So um, great to hear about all the things that have happened and will be happening. So um, I've got a question for you. Um, what more can industry do to support the great work that leaf education and public engagement are doing? Perfect. Do you can I go to, to you that? first, Carl? Yes, yeah, then. more than happy. So for us, there's, uh, there's a couple of things. There's obviously the direct engagement. So there's the opportunity to open up for Open Farm Sunday and, and have that direct conversation. As Annabelle said, it could be a, a farm walk with five people. You could have a huge impact on those five individuals that turn up for that walk, or it could be 5,000, an absolutely huge event. Work with us, take us up on the offer of support, of training, of resources. Even if you only want to dip your toe in the water and maybe you want to do it virtually through farmer time, maybe you want to do it in person, maybe you want to work with us and work with schools or your local community through our team of LEAF regional education consultants. So first of all, engage with us. Second of all, 
for the brands, the supermarkets, the, the, the corporate partners out there, if you like, we've got this information and we've got this direct contact with young people who trust us because we are educators. We are not there to market. We are there to engage, inspire and motivate. So use us and work with us and learn from us. And we see this already, but there's so much more that can be done. Young people want to hear the story. They want to experience the story. They want to see that trust in action. So there's those. And, and secondly, we always need to learn and we need to be at the forefront of our knowledge as well. So we need to learn from industry. We need to know what is happening, what the latest research might look like, what's happening on the ground. Um, and actually, our portrayal of industry isn't just at that STEM level, that science and technology. We have to look at the reality. And if you look at labour markets, actually, a lot of the workers that we need to enter industry are more manually based workers and the support directly on farm. And we talk to young people about this because actually there's loads of young people out there. And actually the, the pandemic has seen a shift in what young people want to do in their careers. And there's this genuine interest there. And so work with us with these challenges and, and learn from us as well. And learn from some of the mistakes maybe that we've made with our engagement and, and some of our experiences as well. Thanks, Carl. That's great. Annabelle, have you got anything to add to that? Yes, just to add to that. You know, then when we talk to farmers about Open Farm Sunday and actually just encourage them, we, we get a lot of fantastic press and media coverage about the work that Leaf Education does about Leaf Open Farm Sunday, but we do need more farmers to engage with us. There's the fabulous team of Leaf Education, uh, uh, Leaf Education Regional Education Consultants and our team of ambassadors, and we just need more farmers to engage in whichever way they feel comfortable with. And so if industry, if you have contacts with farmers, you know, we really would like your help and support in getting our messages out there and actually open those conversations and encourage and support more farmers, because together we have all got to do more to engage society, to showcase the fabulous work that we're doing. Um, and so, yes, I would encourage you to open those conversations. And if it does need the, the, the a, ha a bit of hand holding, then please help them. Please do. Thanks, Annabelle. That's okay. uh, And what I think we've got time to squeeze in one more question. So, um, again, probably for both of you, um, how does the how do businesses and the industry again better connect initially with this generation of young people? Will we soon be seeing you on TikTok, Carl? I think is the um, is the paraphrasing of that question. Uh, not a hope in hell. I will uh, go with there. So uh, no, what we're seeing from the research from the young people that we're talking to is that experiential piece. They want that in person, that human connection. Uh, that that is the way to change now the way that we're changing our strategy is those more longer term um touch points so we know cognitive behavior changes when you have a minimum of six touch points if we want to see change then we need those ultimate um different ways of engaging so for us in school online in person all of that comes together it's about that meaningful uh, meaningful impact really perfect thank you annabelle anything to add to that I I no not really I think I think Carl has <laughs> has said everything there. <laughs> Can I just add one last thing actually? Yeah. And I mentioned it earlier. There is huge support out there for us as an industry from the public and from young people. So I encourage you, please don't listen to the negative press and media that we sometimes see that suddenly the, the wider society is against our industry. They're not. They have genuine questions. Great ask us we've got nothing to hide we will answer those questions yeah. but please don't listen to that negativity as Annabelle will say from Open Farm Sunday the huge positive response we get from the public and as I said 36,000 children directly worked with last year no one has a negative opinion or a uh, impression of our industry they want to learn they want to engage can I just say as well, Carl, you're absolutely right there. One of my, uh, some of the feedback from one of our farmers last year, 
they were saying, if I had known what a hugely positive experience hosting an Open Farm Sunday event was for the, the, the visitors who came, who were just genuinely thankful for the opportunity to meet a farmer and visit a farm, and the farmer saying what a hugely positive experience it, it was for them. And if they'd known how positive it was, they would have done Open Farm Sunday years ago. Mm -hmm. So we've just got to help more people to just dip their toe in the water and then just do it. Make that a New Year's resolution for 2023 to take part, do something new to engage society. Thanks, Annabelle. And on that inspiring note, I'll pass back to Will to close. Thank you both. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. And thank you, Claire. And, and first and foremost, thank you very much to our audience for coming. Um, it's good, good to see a lot of familiar faces and new ones. Um, and Look forward to, to seeing more at our next surgery on the 10th of February. At the same time, we'll be um, focusing on landscape architecture and applying that to farming, which should be really interesting. Um, we'll leave it there and I'll, I'll let everyone get on with their Fridays um, and, and have good weekends and, and see you next time.